another episode of Flavors of the Nation, where we take you across the country to experience some of the best flavors our nation has to offer. Today we're on the campus of Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey, where we'll get to experience some of the tasty specialties at Old Man Raverty's Cafe. Come on, let's go check it out! I asked a few of the locals and they told me Old Man Rafferty's Cafe was famous for their beef Angus burger. So, I think that's what I'm going to get. Wow, look at this amazing burger. I can hardly wait to try it. It's piled high with mushrooms, onions, and cheddar cheese. And it's filled with so many nutrients like carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. <sighs> I can't wait to take a bite. Mm. Man, that burger tastes as good as it looks. But today we're in for a special treat because not only are we going to get to enjoy this burger, but I'm going to show you how our body turns this food into fuel. Here we are at the New Brunswick Health Center. Let's take a closer look at what my body's going to do with that cheeseburger. Foods are composed of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats that are necessary for survival. During cellular respiration, molecules are broken down to ATP, which is the energy that powers metabolic activity, regular activity, and temperature regulation. The journey from food ingestion to energy production begins in the mouth. Let's take a closer look. As we chew, our food is broken down to small pieces and rolled around by our tongue. This action triggers our salivary glands to secrete salivary amylase. Salivary amylase helps begin the process of digestion by starting to break down the carbohydrates in the food we have eaten. Say bye bye bun. The food ball that is created in our mouths is called a bolus. As we swallow, our epiglottis, which is a little flap in the back of our throat, closes and guides the food bowls into the esophagus. Food is moved down the esophagus by the act of peristalsis, which is contractions of the smooth muscle that push the food bowls along the digestive tract. At the end of the esophagus, food passes into the stomach. In the stomach, acidic gastric juices begin to break down the food bolus and kill bacteria that is swallowed with our food. Also in the stomach, an enzyme called Pepsinogen is converted to pepsin and begins to break down proteins within the food bolus. The stomach contents now combined with acid and enzymes are called acid chyme. Over a two to six hour period, the acid chyme passes out of the stomach through a doorway called the pyloric sphincter into a small intestine. The small intestine in humans is over 19 feet long and is the longest segment of the digestive tract. It is divided into three sections. The first section is the called the duodenum. It is here that the acid chyme mixes with digestive juices from the liver, pancreas, and the gallbladder. The liver produces bile, which contains special salts important in it for fat digestion, and then releases the bile into the small intestine. Excess bile is stored in the gallbladder until our body needs it for additional fat digestion. Bile within the digestive juices is what ultimately gives our waste products, or feces, its brown color. The pancreas then secretes enzymes that buffer the acidity of the chyme mixture from the stomach. It also secretes amylases that complete the breakdown of carbohydrates into simple sugars that are able to be absorbed through the walls of the intestines into the blood. It is also in the duodenum that the enzyme trypsin breaks down proteins into amino acids where lipase and bile salts work to break down fats into fatty acids and where nucleic acids are digested. The primary role of the next two segments of the small intestines, the jejunum and the ileum, is absorption of all the nutrients coming from the duodenum. The nutrients are absorbed into the small bloodstream from the wall of the small intestine, where the body is able to use them to produce ATP, the energy that keeps our bodies running. The next stop along the digestive tract is the large intestine, which extends about 5 feet in length. It takes about 12 to 24 hours for material to travel the length of the large intestine, and during this time, water is absorbed into the body and vitamins are made with the help of bacteria found here. At the end of the large intestine is the rectum, where the waste products of digestion, called feces, are stored until the time that they are eliminated from the body. Mmm, that was delicious, and our bodies certainly are amazing. It's important to get the correct amount of nutrients daily. If we don't, we can become malnourished and get sick and die. If we get too many, our body can use those nutrients and store them as fats, and we can also get sick and die. But now that I've enjoyed this meal and I've gotten the energy I need, I think it's time for me to go sightsee in the wonderful town of Brunswick, New Jersey. So until next time, I'm Caitlin Brooks, and I hope you get to enjoy some of the flavors of our nation. Good night.
I asked a few of the locals around what they thought the special meal was. I asked a few of the locals and they tell me all the old and it's filled with so many nutrients like carbohydrates, protein, and fats. I can't wait to enjoy it. It's important to remember to get the correct amount of nutrients in our bodies daily so we don't lose our bodily. <laughs> no.